Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Plastic Soul, the Entertainment Earth Pop Culture Show. I'm your host, Jason Lindsay. Hard to believe that it's already been and gone, but yes, San Diego Comic-Con 2022 happened. After three years, the annual Geek Fest finally happened, and boy, did everybody come out to play. It was a lot of fun. Entertainment Earth was there, of course, with their ginormous booth, with lots of activity just about every day, constantly had things going on. I was very fortunate to be there and do some interviews for the show, for Entertainment Earth, for Plastic Soul, uh, for guests that came by the booth. So I was very lucky to interview and meet Emily Swallow, who plays the armorer in The Mandalorian. She was there for a bit, had a really lovely time with her, great interview. And a certain Mr. Matthew Modine of Stranger Things fame, and so many, so many iconic films, work with so many brilliant, iconic directors. He was there uh, for a lengthy interview. A um, Couple of WWE stars, Fluffy, it was non-stop entertainment, non-stop entertainment earth, non-stop interviews and action. We got it all. But uh, of course, it's not just what's happening there at the convention center. It's all around San Diego. There's events all over the place. I was very, very fortunate to get to go to a private event on Thursday night that William Shatner was going to be at. He did a, a private, private event for some people that had some other extra special ticket, I guess. But then he came out from that, sat next to a guy on a piano, and just started telling stories about his life and how his perspective has changed since going into space and um, mortality. Just, it was really kind of, kind of fascinating. And, um, and then he, he did little snippets of Tambourine Man and other things from his iconic albums like The Transformed Man. Talked about Ben Folds and his new life working with Ben Folds on Has Been. And then, the most amazing thing, he, he suddenly wanted to sing this new song on a new record that he's doing. None of us could film it, unfortunately. We were asked to stop filming at that point. But it was really wonderful. I think it was called Tree or Trees or something. And he read out his lyrics and the guy on the piano played along with it. And they were things, said things like, you know, when I'm gone, don't bury me in the ground. Don't put me in a box. Don't, uh, you know, no shiva for me. Don't, don't uh, put me in an urn and cremate me and waste all this time. Just plant a tree or something. And it was, by the time he was done, there wasn't a dry eye on the roof where this thing was. That was very cool. On Thursday night was the Shatner thing. On Friday night was a 40th anniversary Tron party. It was a Tron like dance-a-thon, dance-off, dance party. Uh, went to that as well, which was very cool. Some Tron themed drinks, glowy bracelets. But really it comes back from Comic-Con, all anybody really wants to know is, what did you get? What kind of cool stuff did you nab? Well, I'll tell you. Went to the Super 7 booth, uh, did a great interview with, with Brian uh, from Super 7 as well, but headed to the booth, got the super cool glow-in-the-dark uh, Godzilla and uh, Mecha Godzilla and uh, Jet Jaguar, I think that's the three of them, and the cool little retro creature from the Black Lagoon in the box. Um, also, NECA, I mean, come on, you know how much I love the thing. NECA had this exclusive figure which has a glow-in-the-dark head, and it's based on the actual poster from the thing, which was very cool. Didn't get much in the way of comic books, but I swung by Eric Powell's booth, who does the goon, bought a couple of trades, and he drew the goon and Frankie in each of those. I also got a really cool Battle of Britain one, which was from 2020, but it was at the 2000 AD booth. Uh, one of the stories is by Garth Ennis. Nothing cooler than World War II comics. And the thing is, I swung by the Mattel booth. I didn't get too much of this stuff until later in the show. Usually there was a, a massive line, but when I got to the Mattel booth, it wasn't so, so bad. So I got a little carried away. I got these set of figures that are called Back in Action, and what they're doing is uh, kind of small four-inch retro versions of previous properties that Mattel did, like uh, Pulsar, Major Matt Mason, uh, Big Jim. I don't know if this is gonna lead to a trend, but they were really neat, so they came in, uh, in one set. I also got the robot, uh, from the Bad Robot logo. Um, so seeing it on the sign, I thought it was like a little, you know, like a little tchotchke, like a little sort of PVC thing, maybe four inches tall. Uh, no, when they brought the bag over, it was massive. It was the size of a toddler. It's this huge stuffed robot, faux leather uh, covering. 
It's pretty cool, but I don't know where it's gonna go. And then on the very last day, I managed to get over to the Mondo booth finally, which was, you know, it's always, you gotta be careful with Mondo because there's so much stuff you want. And I got these two LPs. One is a double disc set for Doom Patrol, and the other one is for Dune. Uh, Dune, uh, they put out a soundtrack uh, that has three discs. It's the soundtrack, and then what they call the Dune Sketchbook, which is two more CDs that are, they weren't in the film, but they're variations on stuff that was in the film. So this is what that is, uh, gorgeous artwork. Um, I got some, you know, fan-made art. One guy that did this sort of half Han, half Han solo print, which was very cool. I also got a little uh, pop vinyl of Astro Boy, half Astro Boy as he appears, half his robot insides, which was at the bait booth. At the Mondo booth, I also got a little pin of Jet Jaguar, which is super cool. And also um, got a couple of pins of, of Ultraman. I forget which booth that was, but I did pretty well. I like to kind of scatter it around, kind of like a mixtape. Kind of like when I talk about going to Amoeba, where if you get a bunch of credit, you don't just want to get one thing. You want to kind of get a bunch of things in different categories. That's kind of what I do at Comic-Con. So I think I kind of spread the love around uh, pretty well to different properties. But let me know what you think. I thought you'd enjoy hearing a little bit about what happened to Comic-Con, some of the adventures. Uh, enjoy the photos. And uh, let me know in the comments, did you make it to Comic-Con? Are you going to be at Comic-Con next year? What did you get at Comic-Con? Or are you always at San Diego Comic-Con in your mind? No wrong answers. Let us know in the comments. Please be sure to hit like and subscribe. And don't forget to sign up for the Entertainment Earth email newsletter to stay up to date on all of your pop culture needs. They won't let you down. It's time to open this guy and flick the switch. Gonna do it. Thanks everyone, see you soon.